Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast Radio Show. Coming to you on this Friday, September the 10th, 2021. Hopefully it finds you staying safe and staying sweaty all at the same time. On today's episode, we are talking overnight success. And what you see on the back end, oftentimes of many, many, many years sometimes decades of of painstaking work. And just to paint a real clear picture uh, for everybody, what it takes if you're really trying to accomplish something uh, of any importance to you or reach a certain level of quote unquote success in a certain arena of life. And I'll take you real deep down the rabbit hole here and paint a probably not so pretty picture uh, for the young hustlers and entrepreneurs out there. But I do try uh, to be as honest as possible Um, I don't want to blow a unicorn smoke up your ass, and I don't want to make it seem like it's the worst thing on earth, but I just try to tell it exactly like it is um, from my personal experience. But before we jump into the episode, our sponsors, you already know, my homies at Athletic Greens, if you've heard me talk about this 800 times and never jumped on it, make this be the time, or maybe this is the first episode you've listened to. Uh, This is the one supplement I take every single day I never miss. Uh, I take the travel packs with me every single place I go. They're in my backpack right now. They're always packed here in the office. If you're somebody who struggles with eating enough fruits and vegetables, this would be the one thing I would throw into your day. It replaces your multivitamin and it gets rid of the need for you to take 14 different pills. There's 75 whole food ingredients in here with probiotics, with digestive enzymes. It's the antioxidant equivalent to eating about 10 to 12 servings of fruits and veggies. How many of you guys do that? Nobody's raising their hand. That's why I would suggest for you to take it. And let's be real, we have all drinking much, much worse things. I remember on my 21st birthday, or like the power hour, I don't know if that's still legal, when you're 20 and you're about to turn 21. I'm obviously boozing all night like an idiot, and then it comes 12.01, I go into this place called the VIP lounge, and let's be real, there was nothing VIP about it. Uh, I remember my roommates buying me five shots of wild turkey, which I drank back to back to back to back to back, and then I remember being dizzy in the bathroom. And then the next thing I remember is being at home in our college uh, house, hugging the toilet, wishing I would die. So there's that. And if I did that, I can easily drink a greens product, which is good for me. And it's not gonna make me hug the toilet, wishing I was gonna die. So honestly, it's the best tasting greens on the planet. If you guys wanna try it, the site athleticgreens.com slash Jeremy Scott, we can get you a year supply of free vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first order. And if you're not sure that you wanna make the investment yet, or you don't trust me that doesn't taste like complete hot garbage, message us on Instagram, uh, DM us if you wanna hit us up on Facebook, on the contact page on the website. I'll have Monica send a pack right to your front door. I don't care what state, country, providence you live in. We'll get you a pack. You can try it 100% for free. Again, the site is athleticgreens.com slash Jeremy Scott for the year supply of vitamin D and the five free travel packs. Also, the podcast is brought to you by my homies at Bean CBD. The site is beantlc.com. I take the dream product to go to sleep every single night. There is no THC in it. You will not get high. You will not feel groggy. You wake up feeling rested, recovered, and ready to just kick the shit out of the world. If you want to use discount code Jeremy Scott, it gets you 20% 20 off all products, 35% off all subscriptions. And if you want to try a sample of the dream product to help you guys sleep a little bit better, I'm happy to send you a sample of that as well. Again, just hit us up. And again, the site is bmtlc.com, and the code is Jeremy Scott for all of the free stuff. And last but not least, my homies at JLab Pro. Now, this is where we get our protein, our turmeric, our collagen, and our krill oil. I've known Jay for probably a decade. Uh, I trust him. He knows his shit. He's a registered dietitian. Um, again, all these companies, you guys, I wouldn't work with them if we didn't know the people uh, personally and have a relationship with them and uh, really trust what they're doing. And I like to you know, support the small businesses. So... If you want to check it out, the site is jeremyscottfitness.jlabpro.com. We always have a discount code on the protein. We always have one on the collagen. I think right now there's a discount code for everything due to Labor Day. Again, their protein is sweetened with stevia, easy on the stomach. Uh, I'm just not, I'm not in a space anymore, you guys, where I'm going to eat things and drink things. I don't like the way that they taste. And also, I'm never going to do anything that makes my body feel like shit. I'm just... I'm too old for that, and I'm past it, so I have to do things that are good for my body. So if you're interested, message us for all the discounts. Otherwise, 
jeremyscottfitness.jlabpro.com. And also we do have a free supplement guide for anybody who wants it. Just hit us up and I'll send it your way. And uh, yeah, if you guys aren't on our newsletter uh, as well, I do send out a ton of these promos in the newsletter um, to give you guys as much free information and as discounts as possible. So uh, hit me up and we can have you added to the list. So you get an email from me at least three times a week, every week for all 52 weeks. Some weeks we send five, six, seven emails. Just depends on how uh, crazy I get. So I do got a couple housekeeping things here to jump into more so just little snippets and uh, stories people have sent me and things I think are beneficial to you. Otherwise, why the hell would I share them? I already know what I sound like. I don't need to hear myself talk anymore. Which honestly, I feel like this is the first podcast I've done by myself in a hot minute, which uh, it's way more work. If I get David Jack to come on every week, I could say about 12 words every uh, every three hours and it'd be amazing. But uh, I digress. I'm here today uh, solo. And I did get a message uh, sent to me from a client of ours who actually works for the Mayo Clinic, if you guys are familiar. Uh, the flagship Mayo Clinic is in Rochester, Minnesota, uh, close to where I'm from. And then we have a Mayo Clinic here uh, in Scottsdale as well. I think you guys are familiar. Uh, they tend to know their shit. So I, I usually vet most sources of things that come in. I think like anybody in this era of time, we have to be skeptical um, of where you get your news information from because a lot of the things passing around in the world today, there's always agendas and there's a lot of bullshit. And I don't think I'm alone when I say that. And I'm not a, a tinfoil hat conspiracy person, but I also understand money is involved in a lot of things and a lot of decisions that are made. And we're not talking tens of thousands of dollars. We're talking billions of dollars that are shoveled around for people to push certain agendas. And I, I don't fault a lot of these industries, even though I do think it's horseshit, like what they do, their livelihood is dependent on money. So like if your job was dependent on you selling vacuums, of course you're gonna try to sell everybody in the world of fucking vacuums. Does that make sense? So that's why every time I hear a news story, I look at it, I don't just read the headline, I actually strip it down and then I interpret it as best I can with my gorilla brain, which is not great. And then I send it to, if it's medical stuff, the one of the 20 physicians we have here uh typically I, I have about five that i go to that i trust and i ask them and then we have a dialogue back and forth and then i'll consult with some other people who they don't know who are also in the medical field and then i'll make the best educated decision for myself moving forward i think that's what we all have to do the problem is i live in a great space here where i've become friends with so many highly intelligent people in all different industries of health and medicine and finance and real estate and you name it, where a lot of people don't have that. So I do feel it's my due diligence to share the best information with all of you guys. And the article that came to me um, was written by Jonathan Newman, who is the CEO at Sweetgreen. And the title was, why has the CDC not issued a public health anti-obesity statement? And before I jump into this, I'm not body shaming anybody. I'm not fat shaming anybody. Hear me out. Don't take a clip of this and send it to somebody like, oh, Jeremy's new. No, that's bullshit. If you're happy being 400 pounds, I'm happy for you. Respect. Do your thing. If you want to smoke 800 packs of cigarettes a day, do your thing. If you want to drink whiskey all day, every day, brush your teeth with it, that's fine. In America, I believe you have the right to pick and choose what you want to do with yourself. As long as you're not endangering other people and blatantly trying to hurt the rest of the world. With that said, if you're five foot three and you're 400 pounds, you are not healthy. You might love the way you look, you might love the way you feel, you might love your lifestyle, but that is not healthy. And that is not my opinion, that is just medical science, that is fucking reality. That's why I'm gonna read through this article. And he shares it to me not to fat shame people and, and not to say, you know, you, you can't be sexy at all weights. I'm a huge fan of that. I think all different types of, you know, men and women are attractive, whether they're big or small, fat or skinny, whatever it may be. But the article starts off with health is your wealth. And I'm going to read here for a second. 78% of hospitalizations due to COVID are obese and overweight people. 
Is there an underlying problem that perhaps we have not given enough attention to? Is there another way to think about how we tackle healthcare by addressing the root cause? Let that sink in for a second. Number one, COVID is probably here to stay for the foreseeable future. Like most other viruses that kind of go around, we, we are great with the advances we've made in technology, but we have not eradicated a lot of things and they're just kind of here. And so we cannot run away from it and no vaccine or mask is gonna save us. Now, in full disclosure, um, he goes on to say that he is vaccinated and he supports other people who wanna get vaccinated. Our best bet is to learn how to best live with it and focus on overall health versus just trying to prevent infection, which I don't even know if it's possible. Again, I'm a gorilla in a warehouse, what do I know? Number two, we have been quick to put in place masks and vaccine mandates, but zero, and I'm gonna double phrase this here, zero conversation on health mandates. All while we have printed unlimited money to soften the blow of shutdowns that have caused so much havoc in our country. And I think we're all kind of feeling the effects of that today. Number three, what if we focused on the root cause and use the pandemic as a catalyst to create a healthier future? We clearly have no problem with government overreach and how we live our lives, all in the name of health. However, we are creating more problems than we are solving. End article, again, by Jonathan Newman, co-founder and CEO at Sweetgreen, which this was forwarded to me by someone who works at the Mayo Clinic, who is a, a very well-established person in the healthcare medical field industry, who serves people every single day and cares for patients every single day. I share that not to... I'm not drawing a line in the sand. I'm not picking fucking sides here. I, I, I'm not all right, all left. I'm a rational human being who believes a lot of different things across the board. And I've said this from the beginning. I, I thought, I feel kind of like, you know, I'm in the Godfather right now. If you ever guys ever watched the Godfather series, if not, you've had a terrible um, childhood and upbringing and your parents should owe you an apology because they should have uh, exposed you to the Godfather, at least at some point in your young life. If not, go out and, and, and block off 10 hours and watch the trilogy. But in the Godfather 3, he has a saying where they're talking to him and he's just like, just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. And if you watch Sopranos, they, uh, Polly, I think, messages a bunch of times or maybe it was Sal. He's like, just as I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Just as I thought I was done talking about this bullshit, it pulls me back in. Because the one thing that he touched on here that I do think is very important is the number three. What if we focus on the root cause and use this pandemic as a catalyst for creating a healthier future? I think that's what I've said a million times already. We've given away so much money um, to so many stupid fucking things. You could have subsidized like vitamin D uh, and zinc and quercetin and the government could have opened up a bunch of gyms and you could have subsidized them too. And you could have ran gyms or you could have paid people, you know, uh, I'm not saying like me, but pay the big box places. I don't give a shit. If it gets people in there moving and active and, and you freak them out enough to where they wanted to actually be healthy and make a major change, I think that would go a long way. And you, you had a, a real good opportunity to do it uh, probably a year and a half ago. Not anymore because nobody believes half the shit you're going to say. But that's what I do think is the bigger problem. And I'm all for the other stuff, whatever. I'm not in government. Those are terrible jobs. I think those guys, they're, they're, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, right? But I do think you could issue, um, if you're going to just start issuing kind of random mandates and stuff and trying to just, you know, throw spaghetti at a wall and see what sticks, you could issue the, the health mandates. I think that would be the most important ones because that shit does work. Like we know that does work. You can literally pull up the studies and the science on vitamin D and the people who are deficient and how rocked they get by damn near everything, especially this, and mandate that because you know it works. Like, again, I'm going to get off my soapbox. I could waste a whole hour just talking about how irritated I am um, with the amount of fucking stupidity that goes on. And I've talked about this in the past, how medical people are not always health people. And, and that's true, too. And sometimes these medical people, quote unquote, that get put on TV and get these quote unquote leadership roles, they're not health people. And I'm sure at one point they started off their career and they really wanted to help people and they had a good heart and they were honest. And then along the way, you know, they wanted to move up the ladder and they got paid money. And I, I don't, I'm trying not to be jaded here and give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but uh, at this point it's like, 
it's like they're not even trying, you know? It, that, that's how I, I truly do feel about that. So anyways, I wanted to share it with you guys um, because it is coming from medical people who are, are close to me and who I do value their opinion and feel they're very, very educated. Um, also, I want to read something uh, a little more lighthearted here uh, that I think is funny because I hear this all the time too. Uh, Eric Bach, who's uh, he's a coach, he's a trainer, I believe he's on Colorado now. Um, mostly online or all online, I think. And he shared something on Facebook, which you saw the day when I was posting in a 47 day transformation group. He wrote a, a quote that I'm assuming he gets from a lot of women. And again, if you guys know me, I love women. I'm married to one. I came from one. I'm related to them. You know, my right hand here is a woman. Uh, and you guys are much smarter than us as men. Uh, you're much stronger. You're way more resilient. Uh, you know, God has put much more on your shoulders than us as men because they, he knew we couldn't handle it. With that said, women do say this a lot. And I don't really hear dudes ever say this because it's really not a thing dudes say. And women will say, and I quote, I want to be leaned and toned, not big and bulky. Um, and Eric goes on to say, I got it. And you know that men have 20 times more testosterone than women. And a majority of men are drowning in medium-sized t-shirts. Ladies, I love you, but let that sink in. You don't want to be big and bulky. You just want to be leaned and toned, quote-unquote. But most dudes have 20 times more testosterone, the hormone that gets you fucking jacked. Literally coursing through their veins all day, every day, like electricity of building muscle. And those dudes are drowning in a medium-sized t-shirt. So what makes you think that you could build muscle so fast and so quickly. And we've talked about this before. In all seriousness, you know, Eric goes on to say, it takes a major commitment to build muscle, especially obviously in women. And so lifting a few heavy weights is obviously not gonna turn you guys into the Hulk any more than, you know, eating a salad once in a while is gonna turn you into like a Victoria's Secret, you know, runway model. You know, most guys will struggle to build muscle for many, many years, uh, some of them decades. Uh, and some probably forever until they really commit to it and figure it out. And that's even, you know, with a, a significant, you know, physiological advantage to grow that women don't have. Again, having testosterone be 20 times higher in a male versus a female, that's like the easy path to being not only more muscular, but also leaner. Because on average, I'm going to, you know, shoot off the hip here, and I think this is still accurate. Dudes on average are about 10% leaner uh, body fat, you know, if you're talking apples to apples. So if a dude is you know, like in the 10 to 20 range, that would be the equivalent to a woman being like in the 20 to 30 range in terms of body fat percentage. And so he goes on to say, ladies, don't worry about getting bulky. However, if you're interested in having more curves, if you're interested in improving bone mineral density and preventing osteoporosis in the future, which I hope all of you would be, if you're into looking quote unquote toned, AKA defined, shredded, cut, ripped, uh, being physically stronger, having more energy uh, and confidence, as well as improving your hormonal health, I think picking up uh, some decent load or lifting weights once in a while is exactly what you probably need. So just wanted to share that off the cuff because I know a lot of people um, tend to kind of, you know, shy away from that uh, for some things, but I had to throw that out there to hope you guys maybe kind of break, break the mold if you're kind of in that old, uh, old school way of thinking. So on to the episode for today. Uh, I've shared this probably, I don't know, half a year ago, give or take. Um, but it's a stay hungry quote that's kind of floating around. And it, the terminology is when people use the saying, uh, it must be nice and then describing somebody's life and, and maybe the things they have or the things they see and you not really understanding what goes into everything behind the scenes. It's, if you ever seen the infographic, it's like a popular uh, motivational poster now and picture where they show the iceberg and they maybe show, I don't know, 20% of it above water and then the other 80% is actually uh, below water and it shows, you know, like what you see of the success and then what it actually all entails and how deep you know, down the rabbit hole, it really goes. And this ties into the episode in general, just called Overnight Success. And the quote is, next time you say, damn, it must be nice, 
you might want to understand the lifestyle that has made it, you know, so appealing to you. And the phrasing is a typical eight to five didn't make it happen. You know, parking your ass on the couch and watching TV every single night didn't make it happen. Sleeping in on Saturdays didn't make it happen. Calling in sick didn't make it happen. Being content with where you were didn't make it happen. It came from a lot of times 15 to 20 hour working days, which I know sounds crazy to people who aren't, you know, in the building a business or entrepreneurial kind of life, but that is a real thing. Um, I've lived it for, for many, many years and it's not easy. Um, it doesn't come, you know, from just sleeping in. It comes from you beating the sun up. It comes from you working on weekends. It comes from you sacrificing family time. It comes from you wanting a little bit better tomorrow at the expense of today, delaying gratification for something that you're not promised or can't even see yet. And that's a few things to consider before you throw out, you know, the phrasing, well, damn, it must be nice, or, you know, lucky them is another one we hear all the time. Uh, we're all products of our competence and the extra efforts that you put in are going to make the biggest difference at the end of the day and that's what a lot of people aren't willing to do and oftentimes you only see people at the end game uh, of the finished product and the other day when Dave Jack was here that podcast is I don't know two and a half hours we're on here rapping and it could have been longer but I was about to pee my pants uh, as was he and immediately uh, we talked for an hour and a half before the episode and he was here till about 7.30 that night. So he was here from like 1 p.m. to about 7.30 p.m. Two and a half of the hours um, you got to hear, obviously. And we all just kind of know what we know, right? Uh, until you have a strong inner circle, until you have friends uh, who kind of push you and elevate you. And sometimes... You have to almost hear it from them to realize, you know, either what you're doing is working, it's not working, you're crazy, you're not crazy. And for him to sit here and tell me, you know, uh, and I'll use my word, not his, that, uh, you know, I've been going at this for the better part of 12 years, you know, very John Wick-like, like with this laser focus, I'm going to avenge the, the death of my, my dog uh, and stealing my car and kill everybody who's in my way. That's kind of how I think about, you know, you pursuing some venture in your life that you really want to accomplish that matters to you more than than probably anything else and full disclaimer uh i share this not to you know flex anybody or say i'm awesome and i share it also not to deter people who really want to go out and hustle and this in no way is is either of those things in fact it's it's the opposite of that. It's is an episode to give you an idea of what a real quote unquote overnight success looks like and the truth behind what you see on the other end. And as DJ and I were here uh, just talking, uh, I remember Dan John saying it to us uh, at a conference that David Jack had actually put on, man, probably, probably seven or eight years ago, he's just talking about you know the 10 year overnight success and his own story of people actually seeing him and, and recognizing him as a coach and a leader, but not knowing it was layered into, you know, 20 years of a foundation that only people are seeing the house that's built. They don't see the foundation underneath. And this goes for any of you guys who are listening. I don't care. It's, it's, it's not just related to fitness. It can be for sure. Obviously, I'll tie it in because this is what we do here. But if you're striving to find success in something, um, it can be as basic as, you know, trying to have abs or as daunting as, you know, raising an awesome, you know, human being. Uh, obviously, one, I think, is, is way easier and one is probably ridiculously difficult. Um, you just, you understand you have a really, a really small window um, of time to make some of these things happen. Now, you have to be patient in between. And when I say you have a short window, even though it's going to take forever, it's going to take three years, five years, seven years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you have to have a sense of urgency every single day, or at least that's the way that I approach it. And I always feel like I have to keep the momentum rolling. And let's go down the list of things that I guess the most popular uh, short list 
um, that I hear from people inside our coaching groups who typically do our 47-day transformation uh, and some of our other flagship programs where we, we really dig down on like what you're trying to accomplish. Right off the top, having abs obviously is a big one. Um, a lot of people want to be in single-digit body fat, which kind of goes one and the same. Uh, some people want to make over $100,000 a year. Some people want to be a, you know, a bona fide millionaire. They want to pay off all their student loans early. They want to own their home outright. They want to get over their fear of public speaking. They want to write a legit published book. They want to be an author. They want to have a strong, happy marriage, or maybe they want to kick their alcohol and drug addiction or the food addictions they have, which I think is even stronger, and that's for a whole different podcast altogether. But those are the biggest ones that we hear right off the bat. And no matter the goal, it doesn't matter. It, it, you approach them all in a very similar workmanlike way, and it's not going to happen overnight. And most of you guys are much smarter and much more talented than I am. So your path may not be as long. It may not be as bumpy. But I'm sharing this perspective for anyone who is on a health and fitness journey looking to make a real transformation and to go back to you know the health mandate stuff we're not trying to put a band-aid on a gunshot wound i'm talking about people who are on a health and fitness journey looking to transform who really want to get down to the root cause of what is going on and how can they fix that and build a foundation of skills they can have for the next three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, you continue to build on that moving forward. This is for people who are pursuing more of an advanced education. Maybe you're looking to graduate with your undergrad or a master's degree, or you're trying to go through medical school, PhD, whatever it may be. You're looking to just advance in your career, maybe climb the corporate ladder and really get into you know the upper levels of management, maybe it's C-level stuff. Anybody who is looking to start their own business and join this um, insane kind of entrepreneurial uh, way of life or any real major endeavor that's important to you. And there's a lot of things I didn't list and mention, but you guys know if you have goals, you're going to have to put in the work. And just so I can paint a, a clear picture of what it's taken me. And a lot of you are probably relatively new to the stuff we do. Some of you guys, the OGs, have probably been watching my stuff since maybe before Instagram or before Facebook. And you go way, way back. Probably not, though. Most of you probably found this through, like, men's health. Uh, more often than not, uh, maybe, like, Instagram organically. Maybe you heard me on someone else's podcast. That's usually how it goes about. And... I can almost promise you there's nobody listening short of, well, even not even my wife, because like, it goes back way far. Probably like, like my parents, it's probably the only two people, and maybe, maybe my best friend, um, have seen the full, the full progression over time. And just to be clear, I got my first official fitness cert in 2005. So for you guys doing the math at home, that is just over 16 years ago. So anybody who's listening and you're, you're two years into the game, you're three years into the game, this is your 16 um, for me, full force. And obviously the journey, it started even prior to that, but we'll just begin the, the overnight success story from there. And again, I share this just to paint a picture for you guys of what it's like for me to get to this point. And I'm gonna miss a lot of things along the way but we as humans are fascinated with numbers. Uh, we like to quantify everything with numbers. If we put a number on it, it's it's tangible. We can own it, and it paints a it paints a picture in terms of a volume, right? It's like well, we say like, oh well, you're 250 pounds, okay, you're big, or your body fat is six percent, you're shredded, or you have 50 million dollars, or you're rich. That's why I'm going to share the numbers here. And off the bat, um, just for me, I wake up at 3:50. Um, in the morning every single day so just before 4 a.m. and I've talked about it before in depth and people always ask why and the way I figure it is that geniuses probably wake up around 8 o'clock give or take and I realized early on in life that um, I was not a genius for sure and, uh, and at least in terms of uh, 
IQ and how I struggled with doing basic mathematics and uh, punctuation, which is still I'm terrible at both. But I figured, hey, if the genius gets up at eight, and if I decide to get up four hours earlier before they do, I can make up enough ground and kind of outwork those people who have these natural gifts that I don't. Now, some of you guys might call that insanity or lunacy, but I saw it as the only possible way to know enough, uh, to learn enough, to become educated enough, and to get enough things done to break through, you know, and be above the noise. Otherwise, I'm just another dude, you know, training people in the park, and this really never comes to fruition. And I figured if I put in more hours than a normal sane person would be, even if I suck, I can still get to the same level. And if nothing else, I can cut the learning curve down because I'm willing to sacrifice so many things along the way. And I'm gonna share some numbers here, just conservative for you. Um, and if anything, these are underreported. Um, I don't wanna make them sound uh, bigger than they are, but this is, this is reality. And even when I read them, it seems uh, kind of insane. And the example I'm gonna give to you guys when you're starting off on a journey, when you're starting off on a goal, whether it be to lose 100 pounds, to look at it like as 100 pounds is really tough, man. I've always found it easier to look at it in bite-sizable chunks and if it's a half a pound or a pound a week, which by the way, for fat loss, I think is really fast. If you have 100 pounds to lose, you're gonna lose the initial stuff probably quicker. Uh, you know, glycogen will empty, water's gonna spill out of your body, a lot of that fluid stuff's gonna go. And then obviously, if you've been eating like shit and not moving, improving your eating any, at all and exercising, it's gonna fly off really quick. But at some point, it's going to, uh, plateau is not the right word, it's going to slow down and it's gonna be stagnant for probably a couple of days or weeks at a time, which is fine because fat loss is not this, you know, perfect kind of linear project. There's gonna be a little bit of peaks and valleys, but the point is to look at like losing 100 pounds is really daunting. If you're somebody who wants to pay off debt, let's say you have $100,000 in student loans, to look at it as $100,000 is really daunting, man. You gotta look at it as I'm gonna pay off 500 bucks this week. I'm gonna pay off 2,000 bucks this month. And you slowly chunk it along the way. And I think that is, at least mentally, more attainable. Because I'm gonna be completely honest here. If I was to look at all these numbers and you went back to me uh, back in 2009, when I'm sitting in the, the lobby of our old space and you break it down for me, uh, what I would have to do to be sitting here today, I would say you're fucking bananas and there's no way I'm gonna give up all those things and do all this stuff to get here. But here I am. And that's why I'm not a fan of always just checking the scoreboard and always just getting on the scale, always just checking the accounts, always just seeing the progress. It's important to have metrics, you know, and you set them if it's every week or two weeks or a month or whatever, but you play the game and you just get lost in the pursuit and you get lost in the doing of it and I think you'll be okay. But these are conservative numbers of how I've kind of built this, you know, machine or prison sometimes as I call it along the way. Over the past, I mean, now we're talking probably 11, almost 12 years, I've sent out 1,972 newsletters. Now that's me saying I've done three per week, every week for 52 weeks for 11, almost 12 years. Now admittedly, there's weeks we do five, six, seven emails, but the most conservative number I can share is I have personally written 1,972 newsletters that have went out to the people who read our stuff. And I still don't know how to use punctuation, so there's that. Um, but that's a lot, man. I have posted on Instagram, not the stories, because I, I don't even know how I would go back and count those, which has got to be probably 10 times this. Instagram individual posts, like you see in the feed. I post on Instagram 4,730 times over the, the life of Instagram. Facebook is, is just north of 5,000, um, and that's on the public pages. In the groups, it's probably more than double that. On our YouTube page, we have over 1,300 videos. On our blog, on the JeremyScottFitness.com website, we have over 1,000 blogs that are written. 
the email number is actually really daunting. And I pulled this statistic because there's a lot of Gallup polls and different um, studies on this. The average um, person in America, the work person, receives um, 121 emails per day, which seems kind of crazy. But then you think of if you didn't check your email for a day, what would your inbox look like? Like if I look at my wife's phone, um, and obviously she has a corporate gig, it'd be like 3,000 emails, like some crazy stuff. Now that would give me anxiety uh, to the point of where I probably couldn't even breathe. So I try to not clear mine, but keep it like under 50 um, between the three uh, business inboxes that we have. So instead of saying I send 120 emails a day, which I'm gonna be completely honest, there's days where it's more than that. Um, that I know for sure. I'm not counting like my fitness pal logs. I'm not counting Facebook messages and Instagram DMs, which I'll talk about in a second. If it's just email sent, I just, and again, I, I do emails every day because I don't like them to get too high. So if I just took an average of sending 50 emails a day, every day for 11, almost 12 years, I've sent 2,019 emails to people, whether that be clients of ours, uh, leads, people who are trying to convert to stuff, corporate gigs. Um, I really don't get any personal emails, honestly, at this point from anybody, which is kind of crazy. You think about that, like how we used to personally email, like friends and family. I don't get any personal emails at all. I, I just thought about that right this second. Like I could look back, I know like in college, you know, I'm old, so in college we didn't have a phone where you could text every two seconds. Basically, you had a cell phone, and my dad would say, use this to call 911, otherwise um, I'm going to murder you. So you really didn't use your phone, and you surely never text. It wasn't the same. You can maybe play Snake on your phone if you guys are old enough to remember that. But now I get no personal emails. It's just those work emails, and that'd be about 2,000, excuse me, 219,000 emails I've sent over the past 12 years. Coaching sessions here with the groups, um, about 12,480 times. I have intro to group, um, talked them through it, and uh, had people complain to me about the music. 12,480 times I've done that. Personal training sessions, we tallied them up at 4,992, give or take. This is the 425th episode of the podcast. And in terms of books that I have read, or more importantly, if I'm being honest, listen to, because I read probably a book a year, but I listen to about 100. And this is uh, like the sixth year uh, of doing that. And so it's about 600 audiobooks. Because you guys know the story, uh, probably f almost six years ago, my car battery died and I took it in to replace the battery. And they're like, do you have the code for the radio? I go, no, I don't. They go, you can probably go get it from the dealership. I said, okay. And no intention of ever going there and wasting an hour or two hours having them find the code. So I never replaced it. So I have no music or any sound in my vehicle whatsoever. And so that's when I started on the audiobook podcast trail. So here we are, 600 books in. And all that stuff I listed, that's not including videos we've done for our private coaching groups our video blogs, um, podcasts that I've done with other people, friends of mine, or brands like Men's Health and Bodybuilding.com and Muscle and Fitness and Men's Fitness, Livestrong, Reebok, Vitamin Shop, you name it. Uh, it's a lot of stuff is what I'm getting at. So when you see something today, um, watch us go through videos or you see some of the things in the back end, it didn't happen overnight. In fact, it happened over tens of thousands and hours of just insanity. And when I started out, you know, now almost 12 years ago, 16 really, when I took the first cert, I was not only, you know, the owner, like which I am today, and I was also the only coach, um, the only trainer, uh, the handyman, uh, the accountant, the financial advisor, the social media manager, the video editor, uh, and also the janitor uh, for, for probably the first, I don't know, five years or so, give or take. Um, you wear a lot of hats and I wore them poorly, but uh, I wore them the best that I could. And if you wanna go into to real detail here um, of what builds kind of these overnight successes or these people who I guess from the outside, you see they're doing something you wanna do, like you wanna work for yourself, or 
you know, have this freedom or you think that they're, you know, they're crushing it on social media or they get to do things you don't get to do or they get opportunities that you think you need to have. Personally, me, and I'm not talking for other people out there, and some of my friends are the same and some of them are not, but I personally sacrifice, you know, making personal purchases, like buying like a, a nicer, fancier car or, you know, a bigger, you know, more ball and house so I could invest that money back into myself for number one and then back into my business so I could best serve the people that we work with both in person and online so I could acquire the skills that I need to actually make the giant step forward, which admittedly isn't fun uh, at first. When you see people, you know, when you're young, you play the comparison game like a lot of you kids do. Um, hopefully you guys are graduating past that if you're listening to me for any amount of time. But it's tough to do when you know you're really making the money, um, but you're, you're not rewarding yourself with the things. And luckily for me, I don't really give a shit. Uh, about that kind of stuff. It's just some kind of weird uh, freak show gift, but it is a sacrifice for sure. And if you're married to somebody, um, then they're wearing, the, they're wearing the anchor with you and you, you got to convince them, which it not always easy to do. I'll just uh, put it that way. And if you want to talk about, you know, dollars and cents, and I'm happy to do that with you guys, I've spent no less than, if I'm being conservative, like $100,000 on personal development, um, whether that be conferences, obviously books I spent a ton on, uh, mastermind groups, all these things over the past decade, just so I could be surrounded and become friends with some of the smartest and most educated people in my profession, which I think that investment has paid itself back tenfold, most definitely. And I know a lot of you out there, I don't know your I don't know your financial situation. I don't know your stance on money. Um, we all need a certain amount of it, and that differs from all of us. Some of us for a sense of security. Some of us for a sense of uh, financial freedom. Some of us for material shit. But what I would say is, if you're if you're thinking about investing money, and I'm gonna have actually next Friday, Michael Bradley from the Bradley Wealth Group is gonna come in. Um, he runs a, a financial firm and talk about all the stuff, IRAs, SEPs, 401ks, uh, the market itself, compound interest, all the stuff that I think is going to be beneficial to you guys that I have had the benefit of learning over the past decade, which has helped an idiot like me tremendously go from being dead broke to being this person today. I'll bring him on. But what I'm saying here in terms of investing, the money you put in yourself, don't look at it as from like a, a scarcity standpoint. Look at it as a true investment. It's not an expense. And that's what a lot of people do. Well, I don't know if I want to buy that course. It's a, it's a hundred dollars. It's two hundred dollars. And it's I know what you guys are listening, like, oh yeah, this is this this old dude who's been making money forever. Like he can he can now say it. I'll share this with you. I remember when I was way back, um God, this has got to be our old, our old place we're in. I think Dave and Ben are gone, so maybe it's Kelly and Monica and myself. So this is probably like seven, eight years ago, let's say. Now, my life is drastically different than it was eight years ago. And this is right before, oddly enough, things started to, I guess, financially move uh, for me. So I'm like 20, 28, 29, that's when things started to kind of shift from, okay, I can kind of really be good um, at this uh, in terms of, you know, not just fitness, but I can actually like make real money and be a real adult and like buy shit and take cool trips. And anyways, I remember I didn't have that much money in our business account. I didn't, wouldn't pay myself a big salary. It was never my thing. I would do the best I could with what I had. And I remember this product came out and God, what was the name was? Was it like a boot camp blueprint, something like that, where it used to be part of this coaching group and they made it into just a, like a digital product. And it came with, I don't know, like 15 different kind of eBooks and videos and products and ideas of, of how to kind of put together transformations and challenges and courses and do things to engage with your community here, like in a fitness kind of business setting, hence the term boot camp blueprint. I think that's the name of it. And I remember it was like at a discount, it was 400 bucks. 
And at the time, I don't think I had spent $400 on an individual product, like a coaching product, a personal development product. I had done like a hundred bucks, maybe 200 bucks. And back then when you don't have a lot of money, that's painful to do, right? Cause you're like, well shit, I'm gonna spend this. I'm like, what if I, I do it? I don't get any ideas from it, it's worth it. And I started to, to stop myself and I stepped back and I said, okay, you're not just investing in this product. You're investing in yourself. And the way I looked at it was if I spend 400 bucks on this, can I make 800 bucks on it? And if I can do that and double my investment, it will have been worth it. If nothing else, I'll have material, I'll have, I'll know the things not to do. And if I launch something and it fails, you know, I'll be able to fix on the back end. And if nothing else, it wasn't a failure, it was a learning experience. And that's when I started to change my mind about how I kind of go about investing things back in my business um, and in myself in reality. And I remember it was 400 bucks and we, we kicked it off and we launched it. And I think we did uh, like, a, like a 14 day kind of challenge or some kind of little quick hitter. And I think we made like 4,000 bucks in the 14 days off the 400 I spent. And that was, all, that was the first thing we had done. I'm like, holy shit. And all I needed was an idea. Again, it's not like just here's this done for you thing that you can go, it's, it's not that. It's just, these are ideas. Um, and sometimes it's just that inspiration and those ideas are, are all you need. But that comes from you investing in yourself. And I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. If Heather was here, she would echo the same sentiments. I have taken her to so many conferences over the years, you name it. And, I, and I've seen everybody speak uh, from Tony Robbins to uh, Eric Thomas, to Darren Hardy, uh, to Dave Ramsey, to Chris Hogan, to Christy Wright, you go down the list. Uh, and I've taken Heather to a lot of these and it's the best money I ever spent. And this is not a knock on her because she's not here, but it would be hard for me over the years. Uh, and she always believed in like this crazy shit we were gonna do. But even with the belief, sometimes if you're if you're gonna do this, like be an entrepreneur and try to do something different, your partner will look at you like you're a fucking crazy person. That's just the reality. And you can say something and they can kind of believe it, but if they can hear it from somebody else, the same thing, they'll believe. It's kind of like when parents tell their kids like, hey, don't do this. And then the coach tells them not to do it, but then they'll believe it because the coach says it because mom and dad don't know anything. It's the same kind of scenario here. So I remember taking her to Chris Hogan to an event. We, I bought front row tickets. It's called Retire Inspired. And that was uh, his first book. I think the next book he wrote is um, like a playoff of everyday millionaires, something like that. And the first book was called Retire Inspired. And you guessed it, the conference is all about talking about retirement, planning for retirement, investing for retirement, what you want your retirement life to look like, when you wanna retire, what, what your dream is, what her dream is, and what your dreams are together. And just telling the stories of people he worked through who had done it wrong and who had done it right. And understanding that retirement is not just an age, but it's a financial number and it's a lifestyle. And I had always said that in my very ghetto kind of guerrilla way, but hearing it from, and Chris Hogan, the great speaker, by the way, if you guys have never heard him talk, he sounds, he has a very deep, deep voice. And he's just, he's hilarious and he's very educated. I highly recommend it. But for him to say it on stage, you know, to get you in that state of believing, it was a game changer for her and for I and for us together. And that's, and that probably cost me 300 bucks. Probably some of the best $300 I've ever spent. And then from there, she starts to invest in a lot of things for herself that she wants to do and follow people that she believes in. So it creates this synergy in yourself, but also in the people around you. And over the years, instead of me driving a Range Rover, instead of me driving a uh, Mercedes, I invested at least a minimum, and I'm being real conservative here, because uh, if, if I really tallied up all the numbers from my taxes over the past 12 years, it would be insane uh, to see. But it's at least $100,000. Investing in making myself just the most educated, you know, I guess smartest, you know, version I can be for everybody that we serve. And a lot of the stuff you don't see when you watch things on camera, uh, when you see me do things or speak, um, what you don't see is me practicing, you know, for hundreds of hours speaking um, and coaching into an iPhone uh, for, for the first, you know, five, six, seven years or so uh, and watching it back to see the areas that you can improve on. And a lot of people aren't willing to do that, to become better. And you can always improve. I'm still not great 
uh, but I try to be better. And same thing with the podcast. You just you try to do better as you go. And the only way you can do that is just keep investing the hours into it. And that's tough to do, especially when you're not, you know, seeing the growth or, or making the money or getting the praise or ever the thing you're searching for. If you're doing it for the outside things, it's really hard to stay its course. And it's tough to keep going when you've given up, you know, weekends uh, and holidays and vacations and times with friends and family. And I've done all those um, more than I can count to make this thing a reality so I can sit here today um, and have this luxury. And that's kind of what it takes. It's not an overnight thing. Just like building a great body, you're not gonna have it overnight. You know, becoming, you know, the best at what you do in your field, whether you're a teacher or you're an artist or you're an engineer, you're an architect, you're a lawyer, it's gonna take you sacrificing some things that a lot of other people won't. And personally, I've started a lot of these work days here prior to five o'clock in the morning, and they've ended after 8 p.m. at night. And that shit even makes me question my own sanity at this point. Maybe early on I didn't, because I kind of thought that like that's what you were supposed to do and that's what everybody did. And then I found out that people sort of think I was a lunatic, and that is not what everybody does. Uh, and I, I used last week as the example, but I love every second of it, right? Like we say, um, in our world, like it's all fitness and it's all not fitness, right? Like chasing after your kids isn't fitness, but it really is fitness. You know, you're playing on a jungle gym, uh, just having fun. It's not fitness, but no, that is fitness. And it's all work and it's all not work, right? And I was here last Friday. I woke up early. I worked at home for a good grip of the day, came in here, finished, because I knew I, I knew Dave Jack was coming on and just I was gonna be here till late. And I started that day before five, and I left here at about 8, 15 p.m. on a Friday night. And I had to be back in here Saturday morning for people super early before our groups. And that'll make you question your own sanity. But it also is a unique opportunity that very few other people get to do. And, you know, currently, if you wanna talk craziness, due to the growth of like social media, I spend about, 90 minutes a day, like an hour and a half, give or take, replying to, to Instagram DMs. And yes, all those replies are me personally uh, on Instagram. Now, the other platforms, we have an email system and a, you know, with our website, uh, with Facebook, with these other things, Monica, uh, takes a lot of stuff off my plate. But I try to reply to everybody on Instagram in the direct messages as long as it's like a question we can answer. Like the, the creepy, uh, naked photos and video stuff, not so much. I can't. I'm old and married. I don't know what, what's up with that. Uh, I can't do anything with that stuff. But I do. It does take a lot of time to get back to people and to try to get them help and answer the questions as best as I can. And in the last 11 years, going on 12, you guys, there has not been a single day that has gone by. And this is not an exaggeration. And this is this is the part where I think a lot of people it, it, it puts them off. And you don't have to do it the way I do it. I need to say that. You don't have to be me. I would urge you not to. I think it's dumb. Don't call the business your name. Don't put your name on the building and the t-shirts. Otherwise, you're gonna have to be here. Um, it's your own prison that you built. It's your bed and you gotta sleep in it. Now, albeit it, it buys you a lot of opportunities and you get a lot of things that other people won't get, but also there's a lot of weight that is gonna come with you. But being in number one, anywhere being the owner and when the buck stops with you it, it's all going to be on your shoulders anyway and as long as you're okay with that and understanding you're going to have this if you watch the show dexter this dark passenger uh that rides with you every single day 24 7 365 if you're okay with that then be then just roll with it but understand like you might be okay with it today will you be okay with it in five years in 10 years in 15 years because there's not been one single day not one where I didn't work on this business in some way, shape, or form. Even on New Year's Eve, even New Year's Day, even Christmas Eve, even Christmas, even on my birthday. Every single day, 365 for almost 12 years now, solo. Whether that be filming content, replying to emails, messaging on DMs, putting out fires with clients or other shit that's going on here, and there's always a problem uh, that just comes to the territory. 
They might be, you know, billing issues or technical issues with their digital platforms or something. And now I have a great, you know, group of people here who help with stuff, but at the end of the day, like it's going to fall on me. Like that's just, that's what you sign up for. And, you know, knock on wood on the same note, I have never, you know, slept in or missed a day of work or called in sick here in 12 years. I showed up every single day, no matter how I felt. And I tried to give my absolute best and I'm not even going to dig into the thousands and thousands of painful face melting hours and brutal training and rigorous dedication to eating and tracking macros and making sure you have the right foods. That's a whole nother podcast altogether, but that's a whole nother component of at least my life that a lot of people in the health and fitness space obviously have as well. And, you know, being completely transparent, I think a lot of you who are listening, who, who become a physician or an attorney, or you've gotten into this ridiculous shape, or you've raised, you know, some amazing human beings, or whatever your, your journey is, just like me, it has taken this Herculean-like mental effort not to quit 10,000 times over the past decade. Uh, I think a lot of you, if you're in health and fitness, for sure, you can echo that uh, 2020. Um, probably was, was was the biggest test for sure of your sanity and if you really love this shit and if you really want to do it because some of you if it was if you needed the money and the gym was your life investment then you're going to do it but for those of you who have maybe had a choice and decided to stick with it and didn't quit now that's real passion and that's real love and I respect that but anybody um, who tells you that they haven't had thoughts of just packing it in you know, at least a handful of times every single year, even on their best years, I think it's full of shit. Um, because I don't, you're, you're, you have to question your sanity uh, when you do a lot of these things. Because the truth is it's taken like an insane, sickening work ethic that has exhausted me to levels that um, some days in my body was capable of just to make it through the day um, and to, to wake up and wash, rinse, repeat, and do that day after day after day. And there's a spans of it where it feels like it's all gonna come crashing down any minute. And if I'm keeping it 100% real, I think any business owner has always, always has a little bit of that, you know, buried, you know, deep down inside, like, hey, is this house of cards that I built, is it sturdy enough to, to withstand, you know, if the world goes to black, right? And, uh, you know, obviously for our industry, if I'm speaking specifically 2020, it's, uh, it was rough for a lot of people and it's uh it was hard to get there and you know personally I, I never knew you know success came with so many unknown s stresses and anxiety and uh fear along the way and you work way harder um than you need to uh in this life and you, you do it in way too many hours uh for way too little money uh, at least at first and from the outside people only see the sunshine and rainbows and the winds of today and not the hundreds of losses um, that you've had for years and, and personally that I still have to this day and I chew on and swallow privately and it's not as easy to do but my point is that nothing great happens overnight and nobody goes from entry level to CEO overnight and you can't go from third grade to the 10th grade in a single year you just have to go through the grades you really do and for everyone who sees you know the end product like on Instagram or the podcast or in person and it sees, sees like oh you're always winning I can rest assure you guys there's a thousand uh, major losses in, in private that it, it took for me to get there and still happen, you know, every single day. And so when you see someone from a distance, when you see uh, maybe me from a distance, you're like, oh, that dude's in pretty good shape. And oh, he makes money now and he paid off his house and he owns the building he's in and, you know, he's built his business online and they reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on these platforms on Instagram and the newsletter and the podcast and all this crazy shit, right? And it all is awesome and super humbling and very grateful for it. Just know it didn't happen overnight. And just know that uh, I had to die to get here more than once. And I have to continue to do so uh, every single day to kind of keep this crazy train going. And just know that I've personally failed more times than a lot of you guys listening ever will um, in the past decade alone. Like I failed and flopped miserably over and over and over. And just know... I, there is no work-life balance, uh, at least for me. All I have is life. And then there's work and fun and rest and play, and it just fits in where it fits in, and, and I'm okay with that. But I'm not like 
a lot of people. And I'm also no more gifted or talented than the next guy. That's just a God's honest truth. The only real special talent is I'm willing to work super hard and commit to these things at, at a level that very few humans in the world are ever going to. And that's just how, that's just how I got here. And that's how I continue to, to stay here every single day. And, you know, I mention it all the time, like John Wick, I'm a, I'm a man of commitment and focus and just sheer fucking will. And I guess if that's my gift, then that's, that's what I have to use to keep it moving forward. So no matter what, what you guys are going after, just understand that timing matters, your inner circle matters, your peer group matters, your mentors matter. Without some amazing people in your life and in your corner along the way, you guys are never gonna make it. And to be honest, you know, it's a lonely life. And the journey, even I admit that, um, it is lonely, most definitely. And you're gonna spend countless hours by yourself and endless hours in your own head, which is a dangerous place to be, um, especially for like a serial killer like myself. But without the help and support of at least a few other awesome people, you're never gonna make it. And like all the athletes here um, who I have, we've learned so much from them and they've helped me over the years. Um, and obviously my team of people over the years, I can go down the list, whether it's Monica and Matt and Dave and Ben, Kelly, the Jacobs, obviously Alec is here now. Uh, my wife as well, bless her heart, for being a part of this fucking lunacy for the past decade and a half. Um, and with all that said, if I can become, you know, quote unquote, a success story from the outside um, in this crazy world, so can all of you guys. But just know the overnight success thing really is a myth. And what you see today is because of 16 years of sacrifice and dedication and a level that most people are probably not willing to give. And ultimately it comes down to, is the juice worth the squeeze for you and your journey? Are you guys, you know, willing to pay the price today to see the payoff happen in three years and five years and seven years and 10 years from now? Are you willing to work harder than you ever thought possible and be called crazy? Um, Cause you have to be by all your friends and family for something that is not guaranteed to ever work out or turn into anything even remotely considered successful. And only you guys, can answer that. And before I let you go, I want to share this real quick because I posted on Instagram the other day. It was um, a quote that I ran across years ago from Harley Davidson. It said, you know, when you're writing the story of your life, don't let anyone else hold the pen. And it's pretty self-explanatory, but how I interpret it is you got to start building the life you want. Some people will say that this whole concept is a fantasy and a fairy tale. And they say things like, well, you can't build the life you want. And they'll blame genetics and their parents and geographical location and financial situations and the economy, the president, whatever. They have this victim mentality and they never let it go. But you have to stop with the victim mentality stuff. You can build a life you want or your ideal life. Now, you just can't have it though. Nobody's gonna come hand it to you and won't show up on your front door in two days. Meaning you can't just order it on Amazon Prime. That's not how reality works. Like all great things in life that are worthwhile, it's gonna take time. The body, the career, the relationships, living a life of your dreams, that shit is earned and built and created. It is not just given to you. Your life and your happiness are a direct product of your choices. And that goes for all of us. So when someone tells you that you can't have your ideal badass life, what they're really telling you is that you're not capable of making good decisions and following through and committing to sacrificing some luxuries today for the payoff tomorrow. And I personally say, fuck that. Your life and your happiness is a direct reflection of what you do and what you want. The impact you wanna have and the life you want to lead. Building your ideal career, your body, your relationships, or your life, this shit's not easy. In fact, it's hard as hell. And very few people get to do it. But why would you settle for anything else? That's it, guys. Uh, just a little rant, uh, nothing super crazy. And again, I'm no special than, than any of you guys. I just, I got laser focused on something for a long time that I really believed in and I was passionate about and decided to pour every ounce of my talent into it and then some and I squeezed every single ounce uh, of that sponge dry over the years, but I would never wanna look back on my life, you know, saying, hey, my talent far exceeded my ambition. I always wanna go back and say, you know what? My ambition in life and my effort far exceeded any talent that I ever had. And I squeezed every single ounce of it dry 
to kind of give the world my craft and feel like I'm a steward of, of any gifts that I do have. So hopefully you guys got something from that. Um, and it, not to deter you, but hopefully motivate you to push a little bit harder than you maybe thought possible. And if you do that long enough, consistently enough, um, and you have any talent at all, some real awesome things are gonna happen for you. So I appreciate you guys as always. All the sponsors will be in the show notes. If you need something, hit me up. Uh, Michael Bradley will be on the podcast next Friday, talking all things finance. I'll, I'll ask a, an IG a story question to kind of get some topics for him. If you guys have money questions, he's going to be the dude to answer them. So if you're on uh, Apple Podcasts right now, drop out a five-star, leave a comment. I truly would appreciate it. And until next time, you guys, eat well, train hard, be nice to people, and please keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.